SAM2 or segment anything to is a segmentation model that can detect and segment out an arbitrary object in our images. We can either prompt it, specify a specific point that we want to segment out, and then we can act like also track it across multiple frames in a video, for example. So this is a very good foundation model, both for doing some detections, also labeling, it's a very good also labeling tools to go in, use the foundation model to label your data set, especially if you have videos, because you can track the mask across multiple frames. You then have your detections. You can train smaller models like the YOLO models to run significantly faster and still get the same performance or like very good performance because the same models, they're not able to run in real time. They're slow compared to the YOLO models, but let's go in and take a look at it. We have a notebook that we're going to run through and I'll talk about what it can be used for. So first of all here, let's just start inside also latest documentation. We have all these different models available if you go inside the documentation and go to the models tab. YOLO, a whole YOLO family, SAM, the version one, now SAM2, which also has better tracking, just a better model in general that gets better both mask, so it's better quality, the boundaries of the mask, but also has better tracking capabilities, is also significantly faster and it has this tracking as well. Mobile SAM, Fast SAM, YOLO Nash, RTD, TR, all these models are available in here and we have videos covering all of it. We also have mobile SAM and SAM2 covered in this video here, but right now we're going to take a look at a Jupyter Notebook or a Google Cola Notebook where you can run it in there for the different use cases. So it has this memory mechanism and also occlusion handling so it can track objects or our instances across multiple frames. And even if there's occlusions, something coming in in front of the camera and the object, so it can't really see it, then it can still track it when it catches it later on as well. So this is very much what's going on here. Very nice model. Let's open up the Google Cola notebook as we can see at the top here. In Google Cola, we have free GPU resources available, so you can connect to that and use it. Let's connect to the GPU. We have the whole notebook here going fully into details. Again, first of all here, we just have the examples from our documentation. These are segmentation masks around all the fishes swimming around. We have a guy here in some jumping fun land or whatever. And then we have people walking down here, semantic segmentation where we segment out every single pixel in the whole frame. And we can see the level of details that we get around our objects. It's very high quality. So let's just go down. First of all, we need to pip install Autolytics, and then we're going to see how we can use the SAM2 model directly out of the box with Autolytics as any of the other models. It's just a few clicks or lines of code that we need to do. So first of all here, we go in from Autolytics, import SAM. We can specify the .pt model. So there's different variations as well. We have the SAM B.pt, so this is just the standard version one. Then there's SAM2, which is the SAM2 base model. And then there's also SAM2.1, which is basically just an improvement over version two. So this is how we can run it. Again, just go with 2.1, it's the best model by, by far. It's the fastest, best accuracy, best performance. Just go with that model. We've got the model info, we can get that as well. We can run our inference directly here, either on a video file, on an image, could be a video stream, your webcam, you can even just hook your webcam up in here, not in Google Cola, but if you run it locally, so definitely try that out. Try to run it on a webcam stream and segment out yourself. You can even try the occlusions where you have something coming in in front of the camera. So yeah, let's just run this one. So we initialize the model, get the info of it, and then we just run inference on this example that we have from Autolytics. You can all just specify a YouTube video here and it's actually gonna process it and show the results. You can specify all the different arguments and parameters that you want here. So for example, we can't show it in here because we can't open up the OMCV viewer, but we can hit save and we can set that equal to true and it will actually save the results from our video. So now we should get our output detections or first of all, we're downloading the model, 150 <coughs> million parameters. So it's act like a relatively small model compared to how good the performance is. So it's not like a several gigabyte base model or a foundation model, like the Fron, Florent model, or if you're using the, the big vision language models and so on. Here we can see we got the outputs. So this is act like the drawings. Right now we're just detecting 
every single thing that we want in our frame. We get different labels for it as well, and that can be mapped to act like classes. So here we get the output, we get our labels. This is really very awesome results. We can see the, the inference time here on a, on, a, on a GPU. So again, this is running GPU, but this is around 15, 15 seconds inference. So it's not the slowest, it's not the fastest. It can definitely be used for real time processing, but it's very good across video frames and using it for also annotations because we can see all the annotations here. We can just take this, format it into the also the YOLO format, and then we can train another smaller model it will get the exact same mask here if you just have enough data and it will just run significantly faster and then we can squeeze out 50, 60, 100 frames per second easily on a GPU. So the second anything here can both be used for bounding box prompt. So for example, we can feed it in a bounding box and it's basically just gonna segment out what's inside that bounding box. We can also have prompt, prompt points or we can go in as well and have multiple point prompts. So we basically just take could be the mouse, you just specify, I want to track this point here. And again, this will also work for video. We can try to just let it run up here at the top while we go through the other code. So let me scroll up here again. Let's try this one. Let's send it on a user video. Let's run it. Install some requirements. But if we go down here again, we can use a box prompt. So we just feed in a bounding box together with it. Could be that you have an updatation model running that you want to generate mask for as well. A very fast one, very good use case, and you just feed the bounding box in here as the boxes. You can feed in multiple bounding boxes, and it's just gonna segment out anything inside of that one. So this is a very cool use case as well. We have point prompt. Specify a specific prompt, so that's just an X, Y coordinate. So right now, for example, could be mouse input, could be the center of a bounding box, could be many different options, but again, most often it's just a point. You could have like a segmentation. If you have a labeling tool, you just have your annotation platform, you just play, press, it's gonna segment it, you go to the next object, segment, 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 and then it's pretty much only taking those. So let's go up again and see, it's still doing the processing. Now we can see it runs it frame by frame, so let's see how long this is actually like gonna take. Again, this one is just gonna reproduce this exact output results. We have the point prompt, it's gonna reproduce this exact results. We have multiple point prompts as well. If you have basically just multiple points you want to tap as the annotation example that I mentioned. Also annotation using segment anything model. This is a very cool use case. We can go in, download a sample data set from Autodix. We can import auto annotator. So this is actually like using it under the hood. And then how we can set it up, we have a separate video going fully into details with this, this and we can also use the new same to model, but we have another video going fully into details, how you can set up also annotation tool here, how you can take the data set and train a custom YOLO model. So yeah, we can just run this one here. It's basically just gonna process it. We will get our annotations out. So let's maybe take a look at that. But the other ones here is basically just going to give the exact same results. The video up here at the top is still processing it looks like, so it might take some time depending on how long the YouTube video is. So it's pretty much going to take forever to run this video here through. It's like a five minute video. So you can see this only, it only processes like frame by frame. So you probably only want to process max one frame, one video or like one second, two second video, or whatever, depending on how many frames per second that you have. But let's go down and take a look at the auto annotation example. So that's the YOLO X for the detection model, just the base pre-trained one to get the boxes. And then from the bottom boxes, we get our segmentation mask. So let's grab this example here. Just take the boss and the sedan JPEG files. We get our bounding boxes and then we get our mask with our SAM2 model and it will auto annotate it. I'll put it into a directory with the correct YOLO format. So you can actually just go in and train a model directly on top of it. And to train a model, we already have full videos going through that. But if you go in here, just take a look at it. We have our train mode. All these videos are covered. They're both inside the documentation and on the YouTube channel. If you go down here, bam, this is all we need. We just need to specify our Coco YAML file, train, detect, and then we specify the model as well. We're going to use a pre-trained one, so we don't need so much data. 
and here instead of detect we can just throw in segment if we go back again we have process it now we have our also annotation labels so this will be our labels in the correct format then we just need to put it into our train validation and test split create our data yaml file you can find examples on that inside the documentation as well that's it you can read just a few lines of code annotate your whole you just have a folder of images here that you load in you can even have a video then you grab the data form it into a data set run it two more lines of code and you're training a model then you can use it in your own applications and projects hope you learned on this video here guys sand 2 model the new version 2 is a very good model it's not fast but it's very good very accurate tons of different use cases that you can use it for hope you learned on hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos until then happy learning